I'm going to try this again. This is about my third try. And for some reason, it, I kept switching it to photo somehow, and I don't know how that happened. Anyway, we're talking today uh, about an, another angel story, and this one's by Stephanie Herzog called From the Time I Was a Little Girl. And you can buy this book called Angel Stories, First Hand Accounts, um, in Amazon, I'm sure, or some Christian bookstores. Anyway, she starts by saying, I started seeing angels and demons when I was a little girl. They were as real to me as seeing trees, cars, and houses. I was a weird child because I could see in the supernatural realm when I was so young and no one else in my family could understand it. My mom would invite friends and relatives over to the house for parties and then they would come and I would see, I wouldn't just see them, I would see all the other stuff with them. I would see demons on them if they weren't saved. I saw bunches of demons over them. If they were saved, I could see their angels, lights, and rainbows. If they were saved but struggling with something, I would see black smoke like around them. And when they would arrive, my mom and sister would say hello to the people, but I would be saying hi to the person and the whole spiritual entourage that came with them. I got saved when I was six years old, and after that time, I saw more of the angelic and the light, probably because I had the light inside me. But I still saw the demonic which was hard because I didn't have any teaching or understanding of what I was seeing. When I realized that I wasn't like other people, it brought fear and I would be scared. And that's the reason I never watched any horror movies because I saw that stuff all the time. About the time I was seven or eight years old, I would go to Sunday school and to church, but it was so boring to me. Instead of sitting in the service, I would go out to the parking lot and open my Bible and the angels and the Holy Spirit would teach me. It was awesome and so much better than the church service. I would be out in the parking lot having a total encounter with God, being taught by him and his Holy Spirit and the angels. My family, however, did not have any grit or understanding for the spirit realm, let alone their daughter seeing it and being active in it. At one point, they brought in a woman who was a spiritist or something, thinking they could stop what was happening. The woman tried to cast spells over me or cast out what was happening. She took half a coconut and some oils and potions, but didn't change anything. I still saw in the spirit. God also revealed things to me in my dreams. They were really vivid, and I would see things that were actually happening to other people. For example, I saw my older sister, uh, who went through rebellious phase and would not come home sometimes, nor tell my parents where she was and what she was doing. And my parents would worry about her. But I would have a dream at night and God would show me in my sleep exactly where my sister was, whom she was with, and what she was doing. And I would know exactly what was going on. So I would wake up and tell my mom and it was always accurate. By the time I got to high school as a teenager, I was just totally on fire for God and the spirit, was, the spirit realm was so real. I had grown and matured in the Holy Spirit and God was fathering me. It produced a real burden for souls in me. I was witnessing to everyone at school, even the teachers, and I would see the Spirit of God and His desire on them. When I would look at the people around me, I would feel His heart. There were times when I was taken to heaven and shown things about a person's life, and I would see whether they would be saved or not. I was living in Chicago and would go witnessing by myself in these really bad neighborhoods, but I had no fear because I knew I had angels and their protection over me. I knew I had an entourage of angels going with me. I would go into neighborhoods where there were drug addicts and gangsters and gunshots firing off all the time, but I had no fear. I had a focus and was too, too excited by seeing these people being saved and healed. My dad thought I was crazy. He would say things like, why don't you just send money to go to people like that? Why do you have to go there? It's dangerous. But I would tell him I love it. There were times, I'm sure, that people I was witnessing to could see my angels. I would be witnessing to these really big guys covered in tattoos, huge muscles, and scary looking, especially for me, a skinny little Asian girl. But these big guys would be on their knees crying and accepting Jesus in their hearts. It was because the love of God and the angels were there. Those guys were not able to be violent around that. That alone was the intervention of the angelic. And then um, I'll share this other one that she had too called Superhero Angels. She says, Our angels are strong and mighty. 
That is why I don't like pictures of angels as cherubs, as baby-like children with chubby cheeks and little wings because our angels are strong and mighty. I remember once praying for my husband David and my oldest daughter when they were preparing to go to Nigeria. It was a dangerous time for them to go because there had been kidnappings and other violence, but as we were praying together at home, I instantly saw in the spirit, I told David, no worries, honey, you have a whole bunch of angels and they are all so different. They are going to go with you and it's going to be awesome. I described to him what I was seeing. These angels going with him to Nigeria were like superheroes, like the X-Men or Fantastic Four angels. You could tell no one else would want to mess with them. One of the angels was so chiseled it made him look like he was made out of a different kind of matter, like chiseled stone. He was like the thing, one of the Fantastic Four, but not that color. He was so strong. The devil would throw darts at him and they would just bounce off. He looked so fierce and mighty and scary. There was another angel who looked like a human torch. The flames of fire, whoa, whoosh, were from heaven, and he was made of these flames. Good heavens. Anyway, other angels looked like they had weapons built right into their bodies. They were so not like the quiet, white-robed angels we see pictures uh, of with blonde hair and nice wings. They can look so different, and they are purposed to do God's bidding for us and to work with us. Hallelujah. And that's that one. Okay. And then I thought of just sharing with you um, just a little bit about how when I first came to the Lord, um, after I was saved, I was seeing things in the spirit also, but I was seeing second heaven. I was seeing um, demons. And so I know when I read stories like this, that, that this is real. So it's not just um, sharing because, you know, it sounds like a good story. It's, it's the reality of those things. I think it was C.S. Lewis that said that, you know, that world is more real than the one we can see. And I would see things like, um, oh, I was driving by 7-Eleven. And outside the front of 7-Eleven, I saw a black wolf. Well, they aren't very common in Southern California. so, <laughs> And I knew it was in the spirit realm that I was seeing it. So it was a spirit. And I remember so many times um, seeing different, different shapes and forms of things. And then especially... Uh, later, after my mom died, I had demonic visitations because I was staying in her apartment where she had lived, and she had been active in um, New Age and witchcraft, so I had to go there and live with her after my divorce for a while, and after a year she died, and uh, God had given her a lot of, you know, chances to to turn her attitude around. But at any rate, after she died, I had some really severe uh, demonic visitations where I'd be just fall, just at that point, you know, where you're starting to fall asleep and you're really tired. And then suddenly I felt something grab me from behind and try to squeeze me like it was trying to squeeze the life out of me. And I would say Jesus, and by the third Jesus, it was gone. And there was a time when I also saw, I, I felt like it was the strong man over my mom um, that had kind of stayed around to see who else it might get a hold of or something. And um, I woke up in the night and there was this huge bat-like spirit, which I knew to be witchcraft because I'd seen that one before. Um, and it was as big as the whole ceiling, and that was a big room that she, that the master bedroom that where she slept in, and um, all around it were myriads of other ones that were smaller. So I knew it was witchcraft and stuff, and I was um, terrified, frankly, you know, by what I saw. But again, by the third Jesus, it was all gone. The third time saying Jesus, so. You know, Jesus will come to your defense no matter what, no matter where you're at and, and, and what you're doing. If he has sent you uh, someplace, he's going to take care of you, just like she said. And um, 
just this weekend, I had an encounter or with a with a young Arabic woman. It was uh, really a beautiful thing. Uh, I was at the coffee shop and she walked by and I didn't know anything about her. I'd never seen her before. She was a small framed young gal and um, she looked like in her late twenties or something. But at any rate, when she walked by, she smiled, which is, she was looking directly at me and that was, that was what was surprising. Usually people here kind of divert their look if if they don't want to talk to you or they aren't interested in you or anything. They're, you know, they're just going about their business. They're not looking directly at you. And so I sat here for a minute thinking, Lord, did she see something? And the Lord said, she's a seer. And then I got a prompting from him to go out and talk to her. She was sitting out on the patio. And um, so I went out there. Well, it turns out she was a 33-year-old Muslim gal who, when she walked by me, she felt something nice. She said some, um, she felt something really good. And, and um, so she share, we started sharing about spirits and all kinds of different things. And even generational stuff and at some point she said to me that she had had I asked her about dreams and visions and she said that yes yeah, she does have dreams and visions and she shared with me this dream she had recently where she was in a big huge grassy field and there were a lot of sheep and there was a man there who spoke to her and she said he said his name was Jesus <laughs> at that point inside my heart my heart's like boom 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 you know like wow lord and um but she said she didn't know much about jesus and um i forgot you know some of the rest of what was said um but i asked her because she felt like she you know, needed to go because of an appointment or something. And, and I said, well, could we pray before we you go? And the thing is, some people will hesitate. She was like quite the opposite. She was like, put her purse down and grab my, put her hands out and was eager to get prayer with me. So I prayed with her. And when I did, it was like boom, it was like walls up all around us. It was like the Holy Holy Spirit was all over us and angels all around us. And I asked her after I got done praying for her that um, God would reveal himself more to her and release prophecy so that she could walk and talk with him every day. And um, she, that's just how I was led to pray at that at that time and um afterwards i asked her if she felt i think she was like oh yeah <laughs> and she says i hope this isn't the last time i'll see you and i said well we can fix that we just have to exchange phone numbers so you can text me or whatever and uh so we did that and i'm hoping to very soon see her again because i can tell that you know, God is obvi God is obviously revealing himself and wooing her to himself. Um, but she was also into some Sufism, which is the mystical side of Islam and stuff. But it, God has people all over the world, just like Stephanie is, uh, you know, Filipino-American. Um, there's people I know in India and Russia and all, all over who, who have had such wonderful encounters with the Lord. So... Don't be um, afraid of foreigners. Don't be afraid of reaching out to those people around you, no matter what. And I have to go because it's getting to be the cutoff time for YouTube via iPhone. So love you guys. Bless you.